We're here at NAMM 2020 and we're on the Sonor booth with a very special person here who has two new signature snare models. So, Benny Greb, welcome. Hey, good to see you. Too. So, these have been catching my eye over the course of the weekend, so uh, it would be awesome if you could talk us through your new signature models. Sure. So what we have here is uh, two new models, and focus on this one for a second. Um, some of you might remember the, the original one, which was a 13 by 5.75 beach drum. I actually have one. Me too. <laughs> well, you've probably got quite a few, I would imagine. <laughs> so, um, this is still the same drum in terms of the shell. So, I love the drum still. Uh, they proved itself over the years. Um, I played it in many different situations, from big band to electronic to rock to like. I absolutely love this thing. There's something magical about the 13 by 5.75. It always sounds kind of still clean, but still open and but still controlled. Like it's easy to tune. I just absolutely love it. Um, but but we did a couple of upgrades or updates, um, which are those. Um, so. The first one maybe is, the old one had a, like a plastic black kind of yeah. ring around it. And um, we kind of replaced it with, uh, with this little Bubinga inlay. So it's really like a beach shell with a Scandinavian birch finish, like it used to be, but with this wonderful Bubinga inlay. So I think it looks very classy and cool. The second thing is, we now have, uh, from my favorite series, the vintage series, these teardrop locks from the 50s. So, so they are like Sono used to do them in the 50s, um, but they're upgraded with tune safe. So if you want to detune them or stuff, they stay in tune better, um, but they still look the same, so I like that. Yeah, um, they look great. The next thing is um, the old snare had a throw-off kind of thing to the yeah. side. Um, we up upgraded it with the Dual Glide, which is uh, Sono's premium uh, kind of snare strainer. Yeah. Um, it's very nice, it, it, uh, it's easy going. And uh, it also is based on these two pillars, so it will always stay very parallel. So with other snare strainers, sometimes they get a little bit jagged, and then this will always stay very parallel, and so you get less snare buzz. It looks oh, really nice, super right? smooth, yeah. Yeah, and if you're really show-offish, you can you can activate it with your knee. But I, oh. I you know, <laughs> I didn't realize that's what you've done. Yeah, you know, but I. To be honest, I never really do this. I only do this at the NAM show. <laughs> okay, is it <laughs> a NAM trick? The biggest update probably is I designed with Sona together uh, two new internal dampeners, which are, we call the monorail, because internal dampeners are nothing new per se, but especially for snare drums, they're usually then in the wrong place. So they, the, usually they are like a V-shaped thing with a rod through it, and when you turn it, it kind of closes. So that needs a lot of space from the rim. So it's usually in the in the playing area or very close to the center. It's not the optimal way to dampen the drum, and uh, it also changes the feel of, of the head when you actually then hit it by mistake. So, so these are at the very edge. Right? Uh, okay, yeah. And you just slide them up, close them up, and then they stay in place. It has a very nice, like, smooth feeling to and it. So you just lock that in any position that you exactly. want, yeah? Exactly, yeah. And we have two of them, so we have two different materials, which we call the felt and the sheep. <laughs> the felt is like a simple felt. Uh, the sheep is kind of like sheep's wool, but it's vegan, so it's not a real, <laughs> so it's not a real sheep. But this is real felt, okay? Okay. Okay. So, so they, you just open them and apply them or not, and with that. You have in seconds like many different uh, ways of dampening. So I will just uh, demonstrate them for you if you don't mind. Yeah? Please, yeah. So without them, you have the typical kind of open, nice sound. Like a timbali, like nice long overtones. Nothing, but very nice and straight. Now, if you want a little bit more control, you take the felt. And it's a little bit more like funky. A little bit more bassy. Now, if you want even more, you take the sheep, which is a um, little bit more controlled. And even more, you take just both of them. 
and then it's really like you take your wallet and put it on there, you know? So, and then if you want to go lower, because it's so easy to tune and it takes uh, that very well, you just go down with two or three lugs while the singer is maybe saying, hey, you're a great audience or something like that. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. And you immediately have a very nice fat like sound just with an ambassador coated head with these different levels of dampening. Love it. Now, Sounds awesome. I have some more, can I? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Do you still have time? Here we go. Yeah. Now, this is the newest one. Uh, this is basically the same drum. It's a 13 by 5.75. It has the teardrop lugs. It has the dual glide snare. And it has the two internal mufflers. But it is a different shell. It has a brass shell, a 1.2 millimeter, very thin brass shell. So it has this very... It's very smooth, it's very round, very warm. Again, a little bit more controlled. Or even more. And again, with just a couple of turns, this really has a lot of bass. So if you put it down, just a couple of screws that are facing you. Right? Amazing. I'm, I'm interested with the, your tuning technique. Is this something that you've been doing for a long time? Just, yeah. the, just the first few? Yes. Yeah. And then, so you don't really, once it's in tune, you don't really touch the others? It's just an easy way. If you have it once in tune, and what's also important, the reso head is very nice and tight, and yeah. it stays tight, uh, then that works. The other thing I always have to say, and I often forget to say it, but let's, let me do it right this time. <laughs> This doesn't work at all, because I'm always saying like, oh, this works, try it out. I have to be fair, it doesn't work with a die-cast hoop, right? Right, okay. This is a triple flange hoop, and I like that, because it bends, kind of. Yeah. But don't worry, I also realize some people said like, oh, it will bend it out of shape. I've been doing this since almost 20 years. I never had a hoop, kind of, you know? Right. But, but it gives a little bit, so if you go, go away, it kind of moves with it, and so you can adjust every tuning rod like separately. A die cast hoop is just more stiff. That means when you just loosen one, it will start to rattle, but the drum doesn't care that much, right? Sure. But here it goes with it, and if you then... Then you can allow yourself, if the reso head is tight, you still get the articulation that you need, yeah. but you drop the pitch drastically by tuning it down. And when you tune it up again, you can be very high and funky. Or, again, you go down. And it's never weird, it's never like snares or like a tone. Yeah, yeah. It's always clean. There you go, T top tip. Perfect, thanks I so like much. I them a lot, check them out. Yeah, thanks for showing us through those, that's great. Have a great show, Benny. Thanks a lot. Take care.